Hey guys, I'm Mark Sievers and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'm taking you on an adventure. We're gonna go to Ipswich, Massachusetts and visit my favorite farm stand in the entire world. It's Northern Lights Farm Stand. It's about a 30 minute drive from our house and I love taking the back roads because it's so scenic. You have wild turkeys sometimes roaming the side of the road and especially in the height of summer, it's just a really beautiful drive. So a little history on Northern Lights Farm Stand. It's owned by partners Wendy, Gabriel, and Peter. And the property has been in Wendy's family for about 135 years. Shockingly, it's only been a farm stand for three years. But as you'll see, and I bring you on a tour, it's astounding to me that it's only been three years because it looks as though it has been there for decades. It has one of the most beautifully styled and thought out farm stores. There's little animals, which I love. And Peter grows the most stunning wildflower sanctuary. And I'm gonna show you today how to arrange wildflowers. We're going to do some pickling for some delicious things to keep in the pantry for the winter. And we're also gonna get a really cool farm tour with a few little secrets. So I hope you guys like this video and welcome to Northern Lights Farm Stand. So here is the very famous clam box in Ipswich, Massachusetts. We will be going there for lunch later. And you guys, this is Northern Lights Farm Stand. I have taken you on an adventure to Ipswich, Massachusetts at Northern Lights Farm Stand. It is my happy place. It is just filled with the most beautiful things I've ever seen. And I'm here with my friend Gabriel, who is one of the partners at Northern Lights Farm. Yes, sir. And we're standing in the driveway in front of their farm store, which I'll give you a tour later. It is so beautiful. Thank you. And can you tell me a little bit about Northern Lights Farm? Um, Northern Lights Farm, well, we're relatively new. We opened this up in the fall of 2018, and uh, business has been really great ever since. Getting better, we keep the customers happy. That's yes. what it's all about. It is your happy place. It is everybody's happy place. Yeah, look at that, yep. And 2018, it looks like it's been here, this building, for decades and decades. It's so, it's so well. It blends like, in. Yeah, Yeah, it's that's perfect. what we're going for, yeah. Yeah, we get a, actually, we get a good amount of compliments on like the aesthetics. People seem oh, to Oh, for be, sure, it's yeah. the best. Yeah. So we specialize in cut flowers. We've got about five acres growing of all different cut flowers, all different varieties. People come and they love to cut their own bouquets. Well, I'm gonna do that later and show everybody how to arrange wildflowers. That has an art to it, believe it or not. That's fantastic. That's, that's great, yeah. I also heard that you have a really modern hydroponic unit on the farm. Yep, we do. Yep. So maybe you could, uh, we could take a little jaunt over and you could show me what it's about and explain to me what it is because I have no idea. Absolutely. All right, okay. after you. Okay. I love how eclectic it switches. Oh yeah. Motorcycles it's, yeah, yeah. and the whole deal. everything. Oh yeah. And look at the beautiful little chickens. Oh yeah, we got chickens and there's some uh, ducks in there and guinea hens. Yeah, those are guinea hens. And they're hens. very happy to be eating broccoli. They're, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> make note of that. They're very happy to be eating broccoli. <laughs> This is the hydroponic? Yes, it is. Oh, it's nice and cold in here. Yes. It's a nice that's... little reprieve from being outside in the heat. Absolutely. This yep. would be my sanctuary. I can see why. I mean, it's fully <laughs> insulated shipping container. It's got air conditioning, obviously. 
and um, we even harvest some of the water that um, condensates on the air conditioning. Really? Yeah, and we use it to grow the plant. We use almost no water despite the plants being uh, watered for 18 hours a day. Wow. Five minutes on, 20 minutes off. Wow. So in, inside of this 40 foot shipping container, we have the same output as a farm that would grow between one to two acres of the same stuff. And we're growing um, mainly lettuce, uh, butterhead, bib, and then for herbs, we're growing thyme, cilantro, basil, dill, parsley, and yeah, that's basically it. But really, you can grow like any compact leafy green in here. You know, one of the things that I think of with growing plants indoors yeah. is really about, I would think it'd be warm. Yeah. You need warm in the greenhouse. Right. But this is capped, the, the yeah. thermometer says 64 degrees. Yeah, no, you really don't need it warm. The, the key is like, this is a good temperature and for the leafy greens in for particular. For the leafy greens. Yeah. For the, which is all of these walls. Yep, yep. We, and I see some herbs. I see, I think this may be dill. Yep, we got chives. Chives, dill, parsley, basil, um, cilantro. Basically, any compact leafy green lends itself well to growing in here. So, do you have one that you can show me that's maybe a little bit more mature looking than these and explain yeah. how this process works? For sure, let me grab one. Excellent. Um, here, this looks like a good one, maybe. Let's see. Oh, it's so big, I can't oh, even wow. get it out. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah. That looks like kale. That's kale. Uh, wow. That, that's definitely that. kale. So you harvest, so you grow this from seedlings. Yep. It gets watered, you said 18 hours a day. Yes, yes, that's correct. 18 hours a day for five minutes on, 20 minutes off. And it's being watered while the lights are on. That's also for 18 hours a day. And then you, how do you harvest the leaves? Um, basically, you can just pop one out they grow like in between this foam and you can pop it out and uh, there you go. And then you, you can cut, we cut them off and we put them into these little clamshell containers and, and sell them right in the, in the farm stand. stand. So and people are getting green sometimes five minutes, even less. I mean, that's like optimal timing right. than w when it was harvested or, you know, the worst case scenario is like, a day or two. That's amazing. And then because this is indoors, you're able to grow all of this all year round. So yeah. you are really growing kale even in the dead of winter. Truly. And leafy, delicate green herbs. Truly. It's That's incredible. It's the same output as like January to June. It doesn't matter. Wow. So that's one of the advantages. All right. So, I, oh, I see. So there's foam here. Exactly. There must be a water system yep, there. The water gets trickled down from here. And like even the water that's trans, uh, from the transpiration mm -hmm. um, of the plants gets collected because everything goes down through the floor through these uh, like little channels. Yes, and I it see goes that. to a drain and it all gets filtered really well and reused to water the plants. So you're recycling water and nutrients and nutrients. Yeah, all of this is organic. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So no pesticides, no, no pesticides, herbicides, nothing. No insecticides. So the best is actually food. Yeah. Oh, pure. For sure delicious this is farm to yeah. table yeah. the epitome of farm to table yeah it is so it's just not grown in dirt right but i love i love dirt too yeah but everyone does i'll let you keep up the dirt <laughs> i have to stay in the air okay pod. yeah okay this is my favorite Deal. <laughs> so i see all these kind of led strips so why don't you put that back okay so that i can okay hopefully i can get it in help me wait i'm gonna do this that I'll even help you. Okay, thanks. On your farm hand today. Thank you so much. Whoop. Because there has to be an interesting way that you need a way to light all of this to grow it. Which is yeah. what I'm assuming these long hanging strips are for. Yes, sir. Those are LEDs. So how do we make all of this grow? So it's oh. all in the lighting. Yeah. yeah. And that's the LED lights. And we can turn these off maybe. Look at that. And it's just that for like 18 hours a day. And it gives oh, them- and the other side went on. Yep. It gives them all those little photons that they need for their photosynthesis. That is really incredible. Isn't that cool? What a modern way to be growing leafy greens and herbs. Yeah. 
on a 135 year old property. I mean, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah, it's like the mix of the new age and the old timers for sure. So as much as I would love to stay in this lovely air conditioned pod, yes. I think I'm gonna go outside, I'm gonna pick some flowers and uh, maybe you and I can arrange some flowers together. Let's do it. Ready to learn something different? Yeah. You taught me some things, I'll teach you some things. Okay, let's, let's go. Sweet. Oh, there's that midsummer heat. <laughs> yep. Yeah, five acres of beautiful wildflowers. That's right. So yep. not only do they help support the farm with people cutting and selling the flowers, yep. but they're probably great for the bees. Oh yeah, oh the right? bees love them. Yeah, and it's, the bees are, that's a good one to protect for sure. We need to protect the bees. Yeah, we got it. I just love, there's something about Queen Anne's Lace that, you know, as a kid I used to see it on the side of the road. Yeah. and. Now it's in very fancy florist shops for a lot of money. Isn't that it's, something? It, it is something. It's like lobsters. So I think, let's see. Oh, we'll take some of these. Do you know what okay. this flower is? That is, I don't know. Some of the wow. flowers, I don't know the names, but I kind of just like to, you know, I just admire the beauty. I don't necessarily know all the names. You know, I yeah. love that about you because I did not grow up having a garden or anything like this. Yeah. And I don't know the names of everything. Yeah. But I I I can admire beauty. And yeah. I think that's such a that's even more important than knowing the name of it this is. flower. I mean you're just saying like, you know, what does what does everyone call you? They don't care what you No. <laughs> they don't it, care you know, what, what their name looks is. It's like a mustard flower. <laughs> yeah. Like it could be the beginning of it. You know, I do have a fancy app here that can check. If, really? Yeah, so we can we can find out what everyone calls this thing. It's called a common tansy. I've been called worse. <laughs> <laughs> Those dahlias are looking pretty good right oh about now. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I mean, just incredible. Yeah, real good. Look at that, you guys. How beautiful is this? And it still has the little some of the little buds on them. Because they're as big as your dinner plate. Look at how big yeah. that is. Oh yeah. That's jumbo. That is incredible. Yeah. Alright, we picked a couple dahlias. Yeah. We'll leave these for their beauty. Okay. And I'd say we have enough flowers now to go make some beautiful wildflower arrangements. Cool. I saw a little spot over here with a table that I think could be perfect. Oh yeah. So maybe yep. you could get some water for me. Okay, sure thing. And I'll get everything set up. Okay, fantastic. Great. Yeah, so this is our little flower station where we conduct sales. Um, people cutting their own flowers. I just just put up these solar panels and built this thing the other day with some decorative help from my very talented business partner. Um, he really nailed it. Um, yeah. So that's, that's what this is. Okay, I'm gonna go get Mark some water. So I'm gonna show you two of my favorite ways of arranging your gorgeous wildflowers. Okay. And the first one I'm gonna show you is an urn. I don't use urns very often because they can be a little formal, yep. but I love this really whimsical black and white one. Mm. And to keep the flowers in really healthy condition, I'm gonna put in some fresh water. Oh, nice. And my secret to making larger arrangements is a flower frog. Have you seen one of these before? No, I haven't. So it looks like a really aggressive comb. Yes. <laughs> it's all very, it's like little nails yeah. that are upside down. Whoa. 
And what this does, you know, because wildflowers have a really thick stem and they're kind of heavy, mm -hmm. this helps them kind of stand up straight. Ah, that's cool. So I'm going to cool. put that in, level it off. Dang. And then... And you stab gonna, the flowers into it? And you stab it? the flowers into it and it holds them. That's cool. If you don't have a flower frog at home, and you can yeah. find these online, antique shops, flea markets. Yeah. We should sell them here. You should sell them here. That's a good idea. You can do a, a line of, you can make a grid with just regular old scotch tape and just do a checkerboard grid back and forth, and that will help hold the flowers ah, in as well. Okay. Right. So I usually like to start with like the more leafy things. So okay. when I think of leafy things, mm -hmm. I think of maybe these Queen Anne's lace. And okay. just like regular flowers from the grocery store, yeah. I want to give everything a fresh cut, even though we just picked it. Uh -huh. Make sure that none of the greens or leaves are in the water because that will promote mold which promotes bacteria okay and i'm just gonna start kind of layering them in as you can see you yeah push it down oh, and it stands right up damn right yeah i thought you'd kind of find that cool that is my cool. one cool trick that i'm going to show you today <laughs> well that is a cool trick and we just keep layering why don't you pick okay. out those kind of that yellow what, what was it called clumsy tansy or clumsy uh common tansy common tansy common tansy yeah. okay why don't you pick those out of this bucket for me okay sure thing and we'll get that we'll all get right those common arranged. tansies where are you here you are because those are nice and leafy isn't this so fabulous you hear i mean chickens in the background arranging wildflowers i'm in heaven yeah we got baby ducks we have to see the baby ducks out <laughs> The baby there. ducks are awesome. Uh-oh. There we go. That's okay. They're all tangled. No. Okay. Not a problem. All righty. So I'm just going to clear off these bottom leaves just like I would if I brought home flowers from the grocery store. Okay. Your flowers are much better. Right. Much more mice. Do you hear that, everyone? <laughs> <laughs> and it really is just about just making something feel really organic and beautiful. That's yeah. part of what I love the most about wildflowers is yeah. they're just so organic and they just kind of lend themselves to a more free-spirited arrangement. Yeah. Right? Well, this place is pretty free-spirited. This place and is very free-spirited. And it's pretty organic, too. So we can we can keep adding them in, as you can see. But I mean, you could stop here, really, yeah, and just have that on, you know, a sideboard or an entry table. But mm -hmm. you know, it just kind of celebrates just what wildflowers are—just something that are beautiful. They're whimsical. Oh, they're whimsical. And oh, speaking of whimsical, there is this really whimsical thing that we have over there. Okay. It's called um, curly willow. Okay, like the branches? Yeah, or it's called kooky willow. No, it's called- I like the sound of kooky willow more. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's actually curly willow. Want me to go get you some? It's... I would love it. Okay, I'll get you, you some. You do that, I'll keep going. Okay, sounds good. Perfect. I'll be right back. I love this. So I got this the way I wanted with the flower frog and the different wildflowers. And I'm just waiting for Gabriel to bring me back some of this magical, Oh, wow, that is magical. These look things? At that. Right on cue, right? This is perfect. <laughs> and you know how this will look beautiful. What is this called, Gabriel? Okay, it's called Corky Willow. Corky yeah. Willow. It hit me right when I was over there. So, what we'll do with this mm -hmm. is this will kind of soften the edge a little bit. Okay. I learned about softening the edge of larger arrangements by my friend Michael, who owns Bridgehampton Florist in oh, wow. Hampton. Dang. And Holy moly. He's taught me a lot. Must be a nice spot. It is a nice spot. Mm. But I, I love how this will just kind of bring the green down around a little bit. Uh -huh. And if I was at home yeah. and I had this, say, sitting on my credenza in the dining room, uh, yeah. I would take this really long one yeah, and I would let it trail uh, down the front, yeah. right down that sideboard or buffet or whatever. Yeah. And just, I like flowers I could... that look really earthy, mm -hmm. very organic, mm -hmm. and like kind of like they are in nature. I mean, I think yeah, that's when things look the best. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I like that style too. Let's see. We'll add one more right to the front here. Mm -hmm. But I can tell that this 
caught up there. Oh, I love that. That's really beautiful. So you've showed me farm to table lettuces. Yeah. And this is now farm to table flowers. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's what it is. You learned something? I learned a lot. That's what I like, sir. <laughs> So let's push this one to the side. Okay. And I'm going to show you my other way that I love arranging okay. wild flowers or any flowers, really. But uh huh. So what I've done is I've filled up just some little glasses, right? Okay. Yeah. So technically, if it can hold water, it can be a vase. So you ah. could use teacups or juice glasses or old bottles. Okay. And a mini I, vase. A mini vase. Cool. And what I want to do is just put little fresh flowers right in these little vases. Nice. And what's wonderful about doing arrangements like this mm -hmm. is at the end of a dinner, if you have one for every person, mm -hmm. They can take it home as a little memento. Ah. And they I, can remember it for a few days they later. They can remember it for a few days later. Uh -huh. And it's wonderful to do that with like, you know, reusing jam and jelly jars and things like that. Uh -huh. And I think we should put a little bit of this, this special, I'm gonna call it, what is it called again? Um, Corky Willow. Corky Willow. Yeah. So I think I'll put a little bit in each and just kind of soften that a little bit. Cool. But I mean, you could do multiples of these down the center of a long harvest table. Mm -hmm. And I just think it adds such amazing Feng style. Shui. Yeah, and look at that. I mean, we'll just put these in their little blossoms just right here. Okay, that looks it good. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. That's what cool. I love about the summer. The summer can be very casual. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> and let's give, I think we should give this beautiful one its own center stage. What do you think? For sure, yeah, it's worthy. Let's see if the glass is strong enough to hold it because that is really heavy. Cut, so it just kisses that rim of that glass. Wow. That is a nice, that is a nice creation. <laughs> a single, single stem has never looked so good. So the final thing I'm gonna do today while I'm at Northern Lights Farm Stand is pickle some cucumbers. So I have a recipe on my website for farmer's market pickles, and it's really just about the brine. And I've used four cups of water, one cup of apple cider vinegar, and three tablespoons of sea salt. And you can just heat it in a pan just until the salt dissolves. Let it cool to room temperature, and then you're ready to use it. And I use this brine all summer long for all kinds of things that I pickle. But I was able to find these beautiful Kirby cucumbers today on the farm. So I thought what I would do is pickle some of these with some different flavors. I'm gonna make a little discard pile and keep it for the chickens because they'll love those. And all I'm gonna do is just do some nice thick slices of these beautiful thin skinned Kirby pickle cucumbers. And what I like about my brine is it's not overly vinegary and you can use apple cider vinegar, you can use distilled white wine vinegar, you can use champagne vinegar. It all kind of gives a little bit of a different flavor, but, and they pickle really quickly. These will technically be ready in about a week, but I've kept them in my refrigerator for up to six months before. This one, get a little bit of dirt on this one. I thought I cleaned everything off, there we go. And I'm gonna show you just a couple different ways of flavoring all of this. So these are nice thick slices. These would be delicious on a cheese board or as part of a picnic, you can just bring the jar and eat them right up. So you can see I'm doing nice thick slices. You can do spears, you can do thinner slices. It's whatever you wanna do. 
and I'll do one in a spear and I'll show you what that looks like. So here's a good one. I'm just gonna cut it into quarters. See, just like that. And trust me, these are way better than any pickle you're gonna find in the store. And these just get layered in just like this. And now we can start adding some flavor. So for one of them, I'm gonna do some black peppercorns, whole peppercorns. And I don't know, it's about a teaspoon. I'm gonna do some fresh farm chives that I picked from the garden. These are really fresh. And these I'm just gonna roll up into a, just into a little kind of pile here and then put those right into the jar. And then for this one, I'm gonna do some white peppercorns and some mustard seed and some beautiful fresh dill. And you can take it right off the stem if you want or you can just roll it up into a little pile and put it right in like this one. And I think this one, I'm just gonna do some beautiful black peppercorns, keep it really simple. I don't wanna mask the flavor too much of the gorgeous cucumbers. And then here is my brine. And I'm just gonna add in my brine, just like that. Make sure the pickles are covered. And then add a little bit to this one and then a little bit of this one. And then, little lids to my canning jars. And these are ready to go into my fridge for at least a week, up to probably four or five months, and you'll have gorgeous farmer's market pickles. It doesn't get fresher than this. I'm literally pickling cucumbers in the garden at the farm stand. Hey guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I had fun making it. Um, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Head over to marksievers.com to learn more about Northern Lights Farm Stand and some behind the scenes with me and Gabriel. All right. See you guys later. See you later. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>
The funny thing about Queen Anne's lace is they're also an effective contraceptive. But I'm not a doctor, so <laughs> I'm not recommending that to anyone, but Queen Anne's lace is a contraceptive. Okay. I was... So let's start again, though, because I want to talk about the bees. <laughs> okay. So you showed... Not a loud wall. Okay. All right. We got this. We got this. Thank you. That's... Find me on Instagram, Mark J. Sievers, or just go to MarkSievers.com. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a great afternoon, guys. Thanks. Oh, thanks. I'm all like, thank you. Come again. <laughs> <laughs> I work here now. Yeah. Just so we're completely nice. clear.